right, this morning I have the privilege of speaking with Adam Lieberman, who is the Director of Public and Media Relations for the Akron Arrows. Um, Adam, how are you this morning? I'm well, thanks. Great. Um, well, again, I wanted to thank you for spending some time with me this morning and giving me a little bit of insight into what your position uh, entails with the Akron Arrows. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, sure, let's go. First question is, what are your responsibilities, and how do these responsibilities integrate with marketing and business objectives for the organization and or its clients? Well, my responsibilities as the public media relations part of the title implies deals with both the media aspect of, of the business and the public aspect of the business covers uh, to some degree, community relations, some degree, marketing, some degree, the on-field and off-field uh, happenings of the stadium, uh, of the ball club. It, in the minor leagues, you have uh, a lot of people, it's smaller staff, so a lot of people have to cover a lot of different areas, so it's kind of spread around a, a bunch of different areas versus when I uh, had spent um, 10 seasons with the Atlanta Braves, and you have more people, more resources, and so you can be more focused on one area, which I was more on the media relations and on-field player uh, aspects with them. And so uh, the, it integrates, I mean, I'm included in all the business and marketing meetings because uh, I need to know what they're doing. I need to be able to, uh, in case something gets out, some misinformation, I need to be able to know what is going on. I need to uh, be on the front line with them as far as any changes and announcements so we have things ready to go. Um, you know, anything that we're talking about, new marketing initiatives for the next season or uh, in-season things, social media or otherwise. I run our social media channels um, okay. along with our, our owner, Ken Babby, who, uh, you know, to try to get the word out through those. We do, we you know, uh, I help head up the website. The we have an app in stadium app during the games, but anything that we try to get out, uh, any new promotion, whatnot, we all we have press releases, we have announcements for, we have uh, uh, different things. It just depends on what le what level and degree. I mean, uh, something like the big scoreboard uh, announcement require a whole press conference. Uh, something to promote a given game night or a special night like that may just be a press release or an open media opportunity. Okay. Well, great. Thank you for answering that. Um, the second question, what methods of communications do the Akron Arrows use to reach their publics, and how are they effective? Well, I, I think that, you know, you have your standard advertising. Uh, you try to get on television as much as you can, but television advertising is expensive, so you try to maybe do, you know, leverage business relationships and do some sort of trade-out type of things with television if you can. Mm -hmm. um, local newspapers... Um, try to do some sort of business relationships with lo the local types of places that do the uh, like those um, coupon packs that you get in the mail. Yeah, yep. And different mailings. You know, so there's a marketing advertising aspect of communications, and there's the communication aspect from the website, from e-newsletters, from uh, email lists, uh, communicating with season ticket holders, or uh, group ticket folks and keeping them in the loop, uh, keeping sponsors and partners, communicating with them what's going on and, and uh, making sure those relationships are, are solid. Uh, there's, uh, you know, press releases and your standard types of ways and phone calls and that. Yeah, but And your emails generally are, handle your press releases nowadays. You don't really do anything by fax. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, we, you know, and, and obviously, I mean, the social media channels are big. Sure. We're not, uh, we're pretty much your standard Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, I guess Instagram kind of group. We're not really into the Instagram, Google Plus type thing yet. But, okay. um, you, you know, it, but I think the, the app helps and the MILB.TV uh, which shows our games help communicate and get the, our word out. And then we have uh, our games broadcast on radio as well. So okay. you know, we have those avenues to get word out through commercials and, and in-game in reads that we put in. Okay, great. Um, Adam, what are some examples of communication strategies that you've used um, to achieve success, and what were the results? Well, I think depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, I think if you're looking at a marketing thing, then you can come up with more creative campaigns. It can be stuff, 
but we were talking about a new Akron, um, iconic part of Akron last year. So we did a kind of little online social media and otherwise tease leading up to the scoreboard announcement involving uh, our mascot Orbit and Mayor Don Pasquale going around the city of Akron. And we had a little stuffed Orbit and bobblehead on. And then we, we actually then got the mayor's help and had him with our mascot at a certain point. And oh, just, cool. You know, kind of teased, you know, different landmarks around the town and, you know, the announcement of a new iconic landmark. And, I mean, the scoreboard is, I think, the fourth or fifth biggest in the minors, so it was a pretty big announcement. Wow, wow. And, you know, HD, the whole, the whole nine yards, it's really nice. Sure. And, you know, did stuff like that. So that's more of your marketing announcements um, or kind of campaigns. You know, now you have your social media things. To incre- you can do stuff to increase followers, which you can have contests for signed jerseys for X number of followers or this number of followers will get a chance to, you know, different contests and mm-hmm. discounts and things to engage your customers on those avenues. Um, Twitter is more of a news type of thing. It's, but you have also have, you know, um, uh, communication strategies that are reactive as opposed to proactive things in case uh, a player gets a DUI, in case, um, you know, other questions come of a sensitive nature, then you have to have you know, business plans and a um, you know, business purpose set up for that, how you, you know, who meets, who reacts, what's the plan, how you do that kind of stuff. I think that's as important to maintain your image and to um, have that stuff ready as it is to be, uh, you know, proactive for the things that you're trying to push. Okay. Okay, Adam, and the last question I have for you today um how has your public relations practice affected the reputation of the Akron Arrows and or its clients? Well, the new ownership by Ken Babby took his charge in October of last year, and this franchise um, was the Canton Akron Indians in 89, moved to Akron and became the Arrows in 97. And when the stadium was built, it was a $31 million downtown stadium, uh, mm-hmm. the anchor of the rebuilding of downtown, the Indians were doing well. The, the Browns weren't in the picture, and the state and the they, they drew a quarter million fans a year. They led the league in attendance, I believe, seven years in a row. Oh, wow. And as of the last year we took over, they were looking at basically two hundred fifty thousand fans. Hmm. And there's been a disconnect here in the community. There's been a disconnect, you know sponsors and otherwise people who should have been in with this team a long time ago that weren't. Others who were and left, and so we had a lot of communications and PR we had to make up both with corporations, uh, with the public, with civic groups. We had uh, our owner, Ken Babby, our GM, Jim Fander, and as well as others in our office have been at numerous speaking events, chambers of commerce, community events. Uh, we have staff community relations out, uh, community efforts each month, uh, and, and we just try to... Uh, you know, return calls and be friendly and just try to repair a lot of the damage that was done. Uh, we increased our attendance by 12% despite the, the very cold April oh, wow. uh, in, the, in the rainy season. And so, you know, I think we're on the right path. I, you know, we had to lay the foundation and get people talking. Hopefully folks who uh, hadn't checked us out will come out and folks who felt burnt by the last group will come out now. I, I just think... Uh, that the other group had gotten in a rut, and our new efforts were really to bring the arrows to the focus, to get the the name out, to put the giant banner downtown, to get a lot of the events and get people talking, and I think we did a pretty good job.